now th this one is a little different because it's not extended. You see, it's not a solenoid. So what would be the uh, inductance of that? So we always begin with the definition of inductance, uh, EMF, negative the EMF induced over di dt. And remember, we're doing something similar to what we did for capacitors. We, we said, what's the definition of capacitors? And then based on that definition, we found the capacitance for a parallel plate, a cylindrical, and a spherical capacitor. So now we're doing EMF, and then this uh, negative N, uh, I, should, I should write it this way, negative D dt phi b di dt, and then phi b is uh, n b a, right? Which is a good topic because that's basketball right now, basketball season. So negative n b times, uh, uh, well, I should put, write it this way. Let me write it. Uh, negative n a d b d t over d i d t. And now you use the for, uh, equation for what is the magnetic field of a coil. OK, so we're doing a coil. And the coil picture looks something like this. A certain number of turns, but it doesn't extend very long. And it has a certain radius. OK? So what is the equation for the magnetic field of a coil from uh, the previous chapter? You guys still remember? Actually, we had a lab on it where we uh, proved the equation. Um, OK. It's n, the number of turns, times mu 0 times i over 2r, right? Twice the radius. So you're taking the derivative of that. n mu 0 i divided by twice the radius, and then divided by di dt. <clears throat> oh, by the way, the, I, sh I forgot the negatives. Uh, negative EMF is the definition, but the EMF is negative d phi dt. So the two negatives cancel. In other words, in the definition of the, e, uh, the L, there's a negative. And then the EMF is negative, the rate of change of magnetic flux. So the two negatives should cancel. And now this one should be N mu 0 over 2R di dt. And di dt cancels here. So the final inductance should never depend on the di dt. It should only depend on the geometrical configuration of the coil. So you have uh, mu 0 N squared a over 2r. It, it kind of resembles the equation for the solenoid. Uh, n squared mu 0 a over L. So you see, it's pretty much the top is about the same, except for the, this depends on the length of the solenoid, and its radius is insignificant. This depends on twice the radius. Uh, interestingly, what this means is, the inductance of a coil is equal to a solenoid if twice the radius of a coil is the length of the solenoid. If the, you get such a coil whose whose uh, diameter whose diameter is the same as the length of the solenoid, then the the inductance of a coil is equal to the inductance of a solenoid. Okay, so it kind of would re resemble this. If the coil has the same diameter and the same number of turns as a solenoid, which is the, so let me just do ballpark picture here, same number of turns over the same length here. Same length, same diameter, same length, that's it. Those two have the same inductance, OK? Roughly, uh, this one has to be a smaller radius. So it should look something like this. OK, you see that visually? OK, let's try now what's the inductance of this. Let's see if the meter reads it.
depends which ones I hook it up to, remember? Uh, the, depending on which ones I hook it up to, there's num that changes the number of turns. I'm going to do 10 turns now. Let's see. Come on, read it. Okay, 10 turns gave me 3.6 micro Henry's. 3.6. L actual, 3.6 micro Henry. And then let's try 40 turns, right? We could try, that's cool there because we can change the number of turns. Two, wait, it's jumping around. One seventy six micro Henry's, one seventy six, one seventy five micro Henry's. Is that right? Does that make sense? This is four times the number of turns, so it should be sixteen times the inductance. So if I divide these two. L actual 40 divided by L actual 10. If I divide, what should you get? 16? Close to 16? Oh, no? Oh, wait. 176 divided by 3.6? No, no, we're not. It's not at all right, huh? 49. Something is wrong, huh? 40. Wait. So again, it might be a problem with the contacts here. Let's try 10 again. 3.6 micro Henry's. Let me try 20. Uh, you know what? I think one of these things, see this one is a little loose. This one is, is a little loose. So I'm going to try this way. I'm going to try these two. This is 60 turns now. Sixty turns, three hundred and twenty-five micro Henry's, three hundred and twenty-two micro Henry's. That's six three hundred and twenty sixty turns. Eighty-nine. So what should it be? Uh, this is six times the number of turns, 36. So according to theoretical, the ratio should have been 36. So how do we explain that? Mm -hmm. See, sometimes the equations work, sometimes they don't work. Sometimes, uh, let's see here. This is good, this is good. You see, if they always work, we are too become too proud. Then we know everything. Yeah, it could be a calibration problem too, but it could be also that this one has a, some thickness, thick-wise. It's not necessarily the ignorable, probably. So maybe our equation doesn't quite uh, apply. Let's try also this way. Let's see if our equation gives roughly the same answer. Okay, our, this is our equation. Uh, where's our equation here? Uh, mu squared n squared a over 2r, okay? Let's see if that gives us, what answer does that give us? 